Welcome back. All right, it's time for another Panic Index. So the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy jersey is being worn because right there, big friendly letters, don't panic. Um, so on the board today, we've got jubilant, happy, nervous, or uncertain because we don't know whether they're going to be in the playoffs or not. Panicked, and when's the draft lottery again? So the draft lottery time yet? Gonna be a lot of teams, I think, under the draft lottery. Although I do reserve the right to put teams in panic who have been eliminated from the playoffs for a while. Uh, that being said, I'm also wearing my Chargers hat because no matter what sport it is, I tend to pick teams that don't win championships. That tends to be the case. Uh, the, the Padres in baseball, another example. But hope is eternal. All right, that being said, uh, we'll start off with the New York Islanders. I think they're in happy right now. Like, I think happy is the best category for the New York Islanders, for their fans right now. You know what? They're, they look good. Last night they beat the New York Rangers. That always makes fans happy. I'm not going to have them under jubilant because they haven't clinched a playoff spot yet, but they look pretty good. It looks like they're going to end up with a playoff spot, and they're not going to be an easy out, I don't think, in the first round anyways. And so, yeah, no reason, I think, for Islander fans to be anything other than happy. Ottawa. You know, Ottawa's kind of in this draft lottery category, but I'm, I'm going to put them in panic for a simple reason. This team was supposed to be better already. This team was supposed to be contending for a playoff spot. They got worse. They got worse in every area. And now we're getting close to the offseason, and there's a lot of questions about who might stay, who might go, and yeah, I think there's a good reason to be a little bit panicked if you're a Sens fan. Uh, so there's there's going to be more teams with panics because now we're going to go to the offseason, and there may be some, some concern for some fan bases, which may include Buffalo. Uh, the Buffalo Sabres, I'm going to put them there as well. Uh, 13 straight seasons without a playoff appearance is just not good enough. But how do you fix it? They they had a decent second half, but they had a really rough first half. They lost games early, same as Ottawa. It needs to be fixed. And I think the other panic with Buffalo is nobody's in the attendance. It, the, the building's over half empty. And I get it. I totally understand why people aren't paying, paying for tickets, but... Yeah, uh, Buffalo, definitely a team that's not awash in money right now, I would think, uh, with attendance being where it is and costs being where they are. Uh, the Minnesota Wild, uh, I mean, they've officially been eliminated. Uh, I, I do think that there, there might be some room for panic there as well for similar reasons as Buffalo and Ottawa, although with Minnesota, it feels like they're starting this process. Uh, which is not helped by the fact that they have the same cap penalties next year that they have this year. The salary cap is is their is not their friend. So even though the salary cap is going to go up substantially this summer, uh, for Minnesota they still won't have as much space as they would have if not for the buyouts of Parisi and Suter. Although it wasn't feasible for them to keep Parisi and Suter, uh, it's been kind of messy. And I think it's just, I think next season's the last year, I think, where there's a $14 million cap penalty between the two. And then I think it drops off substantially. So uh, might be some more pain ahead. But yeah, panic? Sure. Uh, Seattle? Nah. Seattle, I, I can't put Seattle under panic. They're only in their third year. Um, they're still better than teams like Anaheim. Last night they showed they're still better than Arizona. And so, yeah, for, for Seattle, they're, they're not in bad shape. They absolutely could bounce back next year. I, I don't see any reason to have them under panic. I, I could try, but I can't justify it. Philadelphia. Uh, I mean, is there panic? Like, we didn't expect Philadelphia to be in this position, right? We didn't expect them to be a team that was going to be in the playoffs this season. Uh, Danny Briere, John Tortorella have not changed their tone throughout the season. I'm going to say that, uh, that you know, they're in this draft lottery is when category. I know they're still within shouting distance of the playoffs, but what's shouting from this team right now is they're not going to the playoffs. And it, it's been painful. And John Tortorella saying that last night, you know, this is rock bottom. And all I can think is, there's still games left, so it could still get worse than a 9-3 loss against Montreal. But for Philadelphia, uh, they hung on as long as they could, and, and now they're just, I, I think they're just waiting for the draft lottery. Florida. Um, I'm going to put Florida under happy. Why? Well, I don't think there's nervousness right now around the Florida Panthers. I think that they've come through their, their little struggle, uh, and they look good. So, 
Uh, last night against Ottawa, for instance, they shut them out for the third time this season. So they love playing Ottawa. Ottawa's great for the goals against average, the save percentage, the plus minus. Uh, but Florida, I think happiness. I'm not going to have them under jubilant because there have been some struggles recently. But, yeah, happy. Arizona uh, draft lotteries win. Uh, honestly, I mean, I, I could try to put them under panicked. The thing is, this is supposed to reflect, like, for fans and maybe for media and all that. And I don't think Coyote fans are panicked right now. Even with all the the, the discussion of the Coyotes being where it is, I, I don't think there's panic around the Coyotes right now. I did see somebody ask when I used this magnet, like, is that really Coyotes? Yeah, that's the shoulder patch from their jerseys not too long ago. Uh, New Jersey... Panicked? Panicked for New Jersey right now? Uh, officially eliminated from the playoffs last night. Uh, they were supposed to be a playoff team this year. Uh, the defense and the goaltending clearly downgraded from where they were a year ago to where they are now. So how do you fix that? Uh, do you trust Tom Fitzgerald to fix that? Uh, if Dougie Hamilton's good to go in October, does that fix it? Obviously that would help. Uh, Dougie Hamilton being out most of the season does not help the New Jersey Devils in the slightest. Uh, the Oilers. I'm going to put the Oilers under jubilant. I'm going to put them up here. Uh, the Oilers have had a fantastic run since the coaching change. I still think they would have had a turnaround if they hadn't changed coaches. Uh, I don't think it would have been this dramatic necessarily. But, yeah, the Oilers, it's been an amazing run for them. Uh, even if they don't win the division, if they end up finishing second, that's still pretty good considering where they were uh, at the end of October. St. Louis, I, I don't think there's any concern in St. Louis. I, I don't think there's any panic. Uh, St. Louis was not expected to be a contending team this year. And they've played well. I think they've played relatively well. Their points total, I think they have, what, 87 points? It's not bad. 87 points is a good season. Uh, are they going to make the playoffs in the West? No. Uh, the, the playoffs in the West are, are a dream. But I think they're playing well enough that, yeah, I mean, if they hit at the draft lottery, who knows what they may, like. If St. Louis ended up moving up in the draft lottery, let's just say they're 16th and they move up to 6th, they could get themselves a really good player. So we'll see. Or is it 5th? I think you can move up 10 spots, so to be 6th. Uh, Chicago, it's been draft lottery discussion with Chicago forever. Absolutely. Uh, the Chicago Blackhawks, I, I don't think there's any um, discussion of, of panic around Chicago. They have this plan, and it's working because attendance in Chicago this year has been up, up by a lot. So the Chicago Blackhawks, the, the highest percentage of, of rise in attendance, Florida's number one, Chicago's number two in terms of percentage of fans in attendance. So uh, Chicago's rebuild so far, at least from a fan perspective, is working. Detroit, got to be nervous and uncertain with Detroit. Uh, that 2-1 to one loss last night against the Washington Capitals, uh, it's like every time that a team loses in this, in this, this hunt for a playoff spot, the articles will say, you know, a tough blow to the playoff hopes until the next game. And nobody's really stormed in and taken that spot for themselves in terms of that second wild card. Again, I think the Islanders might have third spot. Not necessarily locked down, but pretty close. Uh, but for Detroit, yeah, definitely some nerves. Uh, New York Rangers, I know they lost last night. I know their play has slipped a little bit, but I can't have them anything less than jubilant. They're first overall in the NHL. So... No reason for panic, no reason for anything other than jubilant. And same for the Carolina Hurricanes, who with that win over Boston last night, got that much closer to first overall. Uh, Carolina's playing really, really well at the right time of year. They are playing some of their best hockey, and the additions they made at the deadline seem to have all hit. So uh, this is a good time for Carolina. Oh, and that goaltending concern they had, they don't really have that anymore. Uh, Boston. I'm going to put Boston under happy. Now, I know they're still in the running for the President's Trophy. Uh, you know what? No. No, I'm, I'm going to leave them here. It, it does still feel like with Boston, happy's there. Uh, they should win their division. There's still, you know, that fight with Florida for that top spot in the division. Um, so I'll, I'll, put them, I'll put them as happy, and we'll see how things turn out uh, in a week's time. This is the last panic index i'm doing for a while though so it's where boston's gonna be if you're keeping track of panic indexes for a while but yeah boston i think happy i i'm not gonna put them under jubilant no uh tampa bay hmm. can can you have a team under under up here when 
they're likely going to be a wild card. I, I think he can. Uh, Tampa Bay, I don't know if their window has closed on a Stanley Cup, but the way that they've stormed through the second half of the season, and especially the last month and a half, uh, it doesn't look like their window's closed at all. Tampa Bay's playing some really, really good hockey. Would not want to play them in the first round, and yet here we are. It looks like Boston and Tampa Bay could very well end up playing each other in the first round, and yeah, that, that could be an interesting setup. So if Florida were to pass Boston and finish first, then you probably get Florida, Tampa, and then you get Boston, Toronto, which leaves Toronto fans going, yep, great, love this setup. This setup's great. Uh, Nashville, Nashville's happy. Nashville's happy right now. They've they've qualified for the playoffs. I'd have them in jubilant, but they had lost four in a row in regulation before winning their winning their game over New Jersey and then losing last night in overtime against Winnipeg. So one win in their last, what is it, six? But again, happy they're in the playoffs. They weren't expected to be. Nobody expected them to be in the playoffs at this point. So yeah, pretty good run for them. Uh, Columbus, draft lottery team. Obviously, draft lottery is when would, would apply to Columbus. I don't think there's any panic around Columbus right now. Um, again, I think there's a good team there. And I, I think they've played relatively well over the last little while. And I think the results could turn around for them next year. But we have said that before. Calgary. Is there panic in Calgary? I'm, I'm leaning towards yes. I'm leaning towards yes because the team was supposed to be better than what they are. They've faded badly. Uh, last night, they did storm back and win over San Jose, but it wasn't a convincing win over San Jose. There's just something dispirited about the play of the team over the last few weeks, and it may very well be that they sold at the deadline, but is there reason for panic with Calgary? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I would I would say that for Calgary, there's at least a uh, room for a little bit. Got rabbit fur on my face. I just took, took my rabbit outside, so um, they're very sheddy at this time of year. So, sorry about the, uh, the, the, the touching of said face, but anyways, uh, yeah, Calgary, I'm going to put under panicked. Uh, Capitals, nervous, because they haven't made the playoffs yet. Now, I, I know there are fans that are happy about the fact the Capitals are in the mix, because they were expected to be a lottery team this year, so the fact they're in the mix for a playoff spot has to feel pretty good. Uh, the win over Detroit probably made them feel pretty good as well, but again, uh, this race changes every single day, so... Uh, we'll see how it changes tonight. But for the Capitals, um, yeah, nervous. I would say nervous. San Jose is definitely lottery. No concerns in San Jose, I don't think. Uh, other than, again, much like Buffalo, attendance might be a concern. But if, like San Jose is not attracting very many people at all. And it feels like as half empty as the building was at the start of the year, it, it's more empty now. And so for San Jose... This offseason, they have to entice fans to come back and watch the product. And so I think improvement on the ice next year is important, but no reason for panic right now. Nor is there any panic with the Anaheim Ducks. They are just waiting for the draft lottery as well, have been for quite some time. Uh, there might be some happiness right now with Anaheim because over the last few games, Trevor Zegers has been looking better. Uh, I, I don't think he's been healthy this year. His numbers have been kind of ugly. Uh, and for the Anaheim Ducks, whether they plan to keep Trevor Zegers or whether they do plan to move him at some point, because there's been rumors for years, um, I, I don't think there's anything to those rumors from the Anaheim side of things. But um, whatever they decide to do with Zegers, you want him to be playing really well at the end of the season to increase his value um, to your team or potentially to another team that might be looking to acquire him. Pittsburgh. Um, I'm going to put them under nervous and uncertain, but much like with the Capitals, uh, they weren't expected to necessarily be in this position this year. Uh, after missing the playoffs last year and then kind of getting older, there was some some belief that maybe that was a mistake. Again, you, you never fully count out the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, it is going to be a struggle for them, but they may very well get that second wild card spot. And if they do, and if they play the Rangers in the first round, we know Pittsburgh Rangers series can be can be kind of fun. Winnipeg. I'm going to put Winnipeg under happy. Uh, now, they've had some struggles here and there over the last month, month and a half, but I, I don't think there's any reason for panic, and I don't think there's any reason for nervous or uncertainty around the Winnipeg Jets. I think that this is a team that may very well have a hard time in that first round if they do play Colorado, but I do I think they can win it? Yeah, I, I do. I think that, that there's definitely a, a roster with the Winnipeg Jets they can go out there and at least hang with the Colorado Avalanche and keep up with them and keep the games close. 
and in the playoffs that's what you're looking for and and maybe secure a victory in one of the first two games in Denver and then you go back home and if if the whiteout works this time and I've talked about this before uh their record at home over the playoffs in the last five six years hasn't been fantastic so it doesn't work maybe try something else but I I know King, uh, uh, fans of the Jets get mad when I talk about that so anyway uh Kings fans gotta be happy maybe not jubilant but happy they're a playoff team uh, I know they lost last night against the Anaheim Ducks, so they didn't clinch. Uh, but they clinch today if if St. Louis doesn't get things done. So, yeah, uh, the LA Kings, I don't see any reason why they'd be nervous or uncertain at this point. Um, maybe about playoff matchup a little bit, but I don't really focus on the playoff matchups because A, I don't think it necessarily makes a huge difference, and B, there have been plenty of times where you've said, oh, that team really dodged a bullet because they didn't play that one. They play this one instead. And then the, the team that we look at as the easier opponent still knocks them out. So we'll see what happens with the Kings. Uh, Vegas, happy. No reason not to have Vegas as, as a team that's happy. They're, they're a playoff team this year as well. Uh, they've overcome a lot of injuries. I know people don't like how they've overcome some of the injuries via trades and adding players. But that's, that's kind of how the LTIR system was set up to work. Uh, for the Vegas Golden Knights, I'll have them as, as happy right now. Same with Vancouver. Now, it changes from day to day, and it depends on which article you read and from who. But the fact that the Canucks have over 100 points, nobody saw that coming. Uh, this is a team that I, I still think is playing with house money. I don't think that there's a lot of pressure on Vancouver to do a lot in the playoffs. I do think that if they lose in the first round, it'll be seen as kind of a lost season. But there's a lot of reason to believe this team is going to be uh, in the mix going forward, and that's important. Because Vancouver, the one thing, and I've mentioned this before, Vancouver's never had a prolonged successful run. Prolonged to me is about 10 years. It's it's like what Pittsburgh did. It's like what Washington's done. Uh, Tampa Bay, of course. Uh, what the Oilers seem to be in, in the midst of doing as well. Where you have about 10 years where you're in the mix, you're a good team, and you could be argued as a contender. The Canucks have never had that. They've had a few years where they look really good, and then they fall off. Uh, it happened in the 90s, and it happened again in the 2000s. So, uh, well, which which bled into the early 2010s, of course. So we'll we'll see whether or not this is the start of, of a different era, but it it feels like it might be. Colorado, nothing less than jubilant for Colorado. Uh, seriously, even with some recent hiccups here and there, and even with the loss against Dallas, I I don't see any reason not to have them as a team that would be jubilant right now. We're looking towards the playoffs. Nathan McKinnon, 50 goals, 137 points. Absolutely insane season for, McDa for, for, for McKinnon um, in a league with McDavid. I did almost say McDavid. I did. But, yeah, McKinnon's been absolutely fantastic. 50-plus 50, 50 goals. He's got 51 right now. Um, just crazy. Toronto. Toronto's difficult, isn't it? It feels like it always belongs here or it always belongs here. However... Uh, they've been good lately. They won in, in New Jersey last night, second half of a back-to-back. -back. Uh, before that, they beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. So I think Toronto's playing really well. I think that what we see with Toronto, and this is the case that we, we've been arguing for years, no matter what they do in the regular season, the conversation immediately becomes, yeah, but call me when they win something in the playoffs. It's, it's, it's unfair. I do think that we could show a little more respect for teams that do well in the regular season than what we do. Uh, it's a North American fan thing that we don't view the regular season as anything other than just a prelude to the playoffs, at least some of us. Uh, and so, yeah, Toronto, what they've done this year, I think has been impressive, um, especially given all the goalie controversies we've seen all along the way. But, yeah, Toronto, I'm going to put them as, as happy. Dallas, got to be jubilant at this point in time. Dallas is playing really, really well. And like last night against Buffalo, I don't think that was their A game, but they won. And so now they're, they're in a situation where even when they don't bring their A game, they've still got a good chance of, of winning the game. Uh, the Dallas Stars have been just a ton of fun to watch lately. Really excited to see what they can do come playoff time. Then you have Montreal. Uh, so we end with Montreal, and Montreal is under the draft lottery category, but they're getting better. And with the way Slavkovsky's been playing, with the way that Suzuki's been putting up points, I could have justified putting them up here, but I didn't. Uh, so there you go, your panic index, and this is going to be the final panic index for the 2023-2024 regular season. Um, I don't usually do these during the playoffs because it seems kind of silly to do it during a playoff series, 
But I, I will do panic indexes here and there during the summer as well, so stay tuned. But it's the last panic index for a while. Uh, and then, of course, we've got two more power rankings, and then that's done until August. I don't do another power rankings until August. So uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event that you've not done so already. And if you don't feel that how you feel right now matches where these teams are on the board, apologies, but that's that's where I feel like they are right now. So thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.